welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to the Galaxy. I am the Gamer Under Development, and today we are going to pick up where we left off last week. Last week we actually managed to acquire our Arcwing launcher and show a little bit of how much that changes the sort of flow of doing open world content on Cetus and Fortuna. So what we're going to do here today is a deep dive on Cetus. We're going to cover all of the different activities you can do. We'll run some of the bounties. We'll talk about how those bounties work, including the bonuses and some of the things to watch out for that can mess you up in the bounties. For example, the uh, waypoint placement can be a little bit iffy sometimes. So we'll, we'll talk about that and how to kind of tell if it's being iffy and how to deal with it when it is because you don't want to lose out on a bonus on your bounty just because the waypoint decided to be a little funky. So before we can head out and do all the things, we need to make a few stops along the way. If you haven't acquired a fishing rod, a mining laser, well, it's not a fishing rod, it's a fishing spear, let me be clear. So this is Fisher High Loop. This is where you will find your fishing spear if you haven't acquired one yet. The Lanzo fishing spear is all we need here. We're not going to worry about any of the bait or any of that stuff right now. The fishing spear is fine. The main thing is just to show you guys how the fishing activity works and how you can use that to gain more reputation with the faction, as well as provide yourself with some resources needed to build Gara, which is something we're going to be working on while we do all this. This is Old Man Sambot. If we browse his wares, he's got the Nosum Cutter, which we haven't picked up. That's because, if I'm not mistaken, we got the better mining laser from Fortuna. I do recommend doing that. I don't think it's worthwhile to get the mining laser here if you have access to the Sunbeam, I want to say it's called. Sunpoint plasma drill that you get from Fortuna. This basically has all the upgrades that you would get from the Cetus one, so just go get that one in Fortuna. It's about 5,000 rep, which is one of the low tier missions, or two of the low tier missions. Shouldn't take you long to grab that. You can still grab the one here in Cetus if you'd rather, but it'll end up being a waste of reputation once you get that one. Uh, this is Master Tisonai. He is going to show us how to lure and capture things. So this is a pheromone echo, or rather an echo lure for Kawaka. We're going to go ahead and use that. Now I don't see a Trank gun here, which is a little bit strange, unless I already got a Trank gun from him. So I haven't actually done... This is actually kind of funny. I haven't done the animal captures here in Cetus. I've done them in Fortuna, but not here. Maybe that's why he doesn't have the thing, because I already have the Trank gun. Ah, there we go. I do have a Trank rifle already. So you'll need a Trank rifle. You can probably get this from Fortuna or from here on Cetus. And you'll also need this lure. The Pauvers one is for... That's not the one I wanted. I wanted the Kuwaka. The Pauvers is actually for... Or Volus, the Kuwaka is for here. If you mouse over them, they do say which area they're for. So this one says Kuwaka inhabit the plains of Eidolon, which is why we're going to take that one. Uh, and then I think that's it. I think we've got all of the things that we need to do. The th yeah, that's it. That's all of the things we need to do activities here in Cetus, bar one thing, which is our bounty. So we're going to run over to Kanzu and get a bounty here real quick. Now, you don't have to actually foot it over to any of these vendors. You can fast travel to all of them. But I'm kind of showing you how to run there if you so please. It does look like it's night, which means we're going to deal with some stuff out there that we don't really want to deal with. Uh, no, it's day for three more minutes, then it'll be night. So we're just going to take an easy mission here, and I'm actually going to go in solo. Uh, and the main reason why is because I want to be able to show you guys this stuff at our own pace. If we go for some of the higher missions, I may have to go in with somebody else. And that's primarily just because they're going to get tougher as we go up. Now this one right here is our low-level introductory mission. Chance to get a Vitality if we didn't already own 49 of them. Plastids, which are actually a pretty decent reward because we've only got 200 of them and they get used in rather large quantities. Uh, you can get credits from this. Endo, Nissle Pods, which are a crafting material and a uh, standing material that you'll need to upgrade your standing. The Gara Chassis Blueprint, which we want to build Gara. This is actually one of the main reasons we're here. And then Gallium, which look at this. We've got 18 Gallium. You can get two here as a reward. Now keep in mind these higher end rewards right here. These are the top end rewards you get for completing the entire mission. And if you hit every single bonus, you get a double reward on the last one, which means you could end up with an Intensify times two or four Gallium, something like that. Uh, so definitely worth making that happen. Intensify, I believe. Oh, we do have one. I thought we didn't have that. Maybe Streamline is. I think Streamline is the base mod that I'm missing. Uh, point Blank we already have, and we should have leveled up a little bit. Actually, that is a good point. Let me take a look at our heck real quick. 
I forgot that I had to go do a little bit of credit grinding just to, to make some creds because I was dead broke. Uh, but now we've got our heck at rank 24. We've got eight capacity left on it. I know for a fact that I have some extra point blanks, so we're going to go ahead and raise our point blank mod up as high as we can. I think I might also raise up tactical pump. Once again, the one weakness of the heck is that it has so few shots and then you have to reload. So anything that increases our reload speed is actually going to increase our kill efficiency. Later on, what I'd like to do, there's a mod that has cold damage and reload that you get from nightmares that I would like to replace tactical pump with. Uh, and then I'd add toxin damage onto that so that you can get viral damage, which increases the direct damage that you do to something's health. Very, very nice overall. So we're going to go ahead and raise this. There we go. So now we're pretty strapped for cash. Uh, I'm still going to probably raise a few more mods, though. Maybe Blunderbuss here for a little more crit rate. We don't actually have enough to take it all the way to the top, which is unfortunate because that gave us a really good crit chance. We'll take 75. That's fine. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to exceed capacity if we do that, though. Uh, so if we take it down one more. Okay, better idea. We're going to take Blunderbuss up to the top. Well, up to the top minus one. It's going to uninstall it from the heck because we don't have the capacity. But the heck is a gun that we're going to use a lot as we're leveling up. So it's actually a weapon that I'm totally fine putting an Orokin Catalyst on. So if we go into actions here, we can go ahead and use a Catalyst to double the mod capacity of our heck. Boom, there we go. So now not only are we going to go ahead and... Well, we're out of money to mod, that's right. So we gotta wait, we gotta wait for some more creds. I gotta grind series off streams, or off recording or stream so that we can uh, have enough money to do all the things. But now that that's gone, like really after that, all we really want to do, we've got a really low crit rate anyway. That's, that's kind of sad. I thought we'd get a better crit rate out of that. Um, either way, we'll want more damage. So we'll go Chilling Grasp here. Uh, we know we'll be fighting Grenier, which means that Cleanse Grenier is actually good because it double dips on damage. And what I mean by it double dips on damage is that it applies that plus 5% after all of your elemental damage increases and things instead of off of your base damage, which makes it do significantly more. And then we'll take a look and see if there's anything else. We can throw that on. We're going to get blast damage out of that. May not be your ideal damage type, but it's fine. Long run, that's going to do a little bit more damage, help us get through stuff a little bit faster. And then maybe shotgun savvy here for a little more status chance. Honestly, that's not going to make too much of a difference in and of itself. It might actually be better just to push the puncture damage on this. Yeah, let's do that. That gets us a little more damage. So we've gone from 900 damage on our heck to 1300. Seems pretty good. Uh, that should allow us to clear the enemies out here pretty easily. And we still don't have a secondary equip. That's because I did not pick up our weapons. Uh, we have the dual two-shot shotguns that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head because they're so useful, guys. And I didn't actually grab the bounty. That's, that's kind of key. You actually want to grab the bounty if you intend to go do a bounty. Hey, can can I come back to see this now? No, I can't. It's decided. We're we're going out into the open world now. Uh, okay, so that's a, a thing that people get caught up on here sometimes. So it won't open the door back to see this until we actually come out here and reload this intermediary area. So if you ever get stuck in here and you feel like you can't get out or you can't go to see this, it's because you need to go back out the other door to tell the game that you're trying to reload that area. So no big deal, that happens quite a bit. Uh, even to people that have been playing for a while. I have friends that I play with that have been playing for months and they'll still be like, I can't get the door to open. And it's like, well, you gotta go, you gotta go actually back out and, and clear it to reopen it. Uh, especially if you like come back from a mission and somebody else starts a mission without you ever leaving this intermediary area, you won't be able to load into the planes and it'll be confusing. Okay. That is not the right item. Nope, we're past this. We no longer use that. There we go. Arcwing launcher away! Okay, so now that we have our Arcwing launcher, we can get around a lot faster. What I think we'll do here is we'll clear the bounty, and then I'll show you guys a little bit of the fishing and the mining, and perhaps the animal capture. I, like I said, I've actually not done animal capture here, but it's pretty, pretty universal, I believe, between this and Orvalis. All right. So that is the heck once you've put some upgrades into it. Oh, we gotta actually talk to this dude. We got him. All right, homie, we got you, you're, you're good. Now we gotta escort him to the next point. Uh, we're literally able to do these missions from the arc wing if we want to. Honestly, I probably won't. I'll probably go to the ground here and that's mainly just because we're trying to defend this guy and I want to be able to put up my iron skin. Come on, let's go. Book it. 
Uh, there's going to be some enemies over this rock here, and we're going to leap up, glide down, and shotgun away. Oh wow, there's people over here too. Uh, one trick you can use, if you'll notice, Taxon does shoot a straight line at enemies. So if you're not sure where the enemies are at, Taxon can help you locate them so that you can take them out. Oh, that's our that's our hostage I just shot at. Don't, don't mind me, guys. I'm a little trigger happy right now with this heck. Uh, so that's completed right there. I'm assuming we got the bonus. Yeah, we did, because it says plus 100 standing. So if you're ever unsure whether you got the bonus or not, if there's a plus after the amount of standing you gained, that means that... Oh, gosh. I gotta swap these. I normally keep my main means of travel in that top slot to make it easier to get to. Uh, and I haven't switched the arc wing and the K-Drive yet. I'll do that when we get back to Cetus. But you definitely want to keep your K-Drive, or your arc wing rather, somewhere very, very accessible. So I recommend the top slot right there. Because it's way... It's longer to go down here than it is to just flick up there. Okay. Hack the drone. So the drone is right here. We're going to go ahead and give this guy a hack. Uh, this is actually one of the more annoying missions. It's not so bad on this difficulty level, but on higher difficulty levels, you see those guys flying around in the sky? They will basically rain down destruction on your drone and just tear it up. So in this instance, I'm actually going to go up into the air. And the main reason is so I can take these things out before they destroy my drone. Come here, you. They will, too. They will absolutely decimate your drone if you don't kill those first. Uh, there are some guys on the ground that we need to catch up with, too. Oh, you Arctic Eximus. Please. Please. Uh, you'll note that another one of the airborne guys just flew by, too, though, so you have to keep an... Oh, you, you tried, didn't you? You tried. Nope. Uh, so we gotta find our drone target to protect them, and there is another airborne guy right here. These guys will absolutely wreck your bonus. Oh, come on. They're everywhere, guys. They're everywhere right now. So we just need to try to protect this drone. Gotta keep it above 80% health. Uh, this is gonna be a rough one, to be honest. Let's just drop down here, slash some dudes up. The main problem here is that even as we're killing these ground units, that guy in the sky... Ah, oh, we lost it. We lost the bonus right there. This is where it helps to have a group, but you can see that these guys in the sky are the real problem. Ah, oh, not this. Come on. They are a huge, huge issue. There. Oh my gosh, and another one. Can you not, please? Can you not? Oh my gosh, we really... I'm having trouble killing these airborne guys, and that's the real problem. Okay, we're gonna knock all these guys up in the air. That's gonna protect the drone for at least a moment while we finish them off. And activate our iron skin to keep us alive. And then we're gonna dive in on these guys as fast as we can, stomp them up. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's a lot better. Uh, of course, now we're still contending with, and we failed. This is super frustrating to me. Like, this is the worst design mission of the bunch that you're going to get. And that's mainly because of these airborne guys that you really can't take out. Like, we can't take them out with the heck at all. It would be a lot more effective here maybe to take a, an assault, or not an assault rifle, but a uh, sniper rifle just to deal with those airborne guys. Like, look at that. We killed so many swarms of the airborne guys, but the ground guys basically made it impossible to keep up. Now, if you have a group, that's a little bit easier, and maybe that was the real mistake that I made was not coming in here with a group. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely frustrating. It's all right, though. While we're out, we might as well show a little bit of the fishing and the mining, and we'll also do some hunting, and then we'll go back. We'll try another bounty. Uh, that was just honestly really unfortunate. Gosh, that drone mission just... It's its a little harsh, guys. So definitely keep your group open. I figured we'd be able to do it without a group here, but it didn't occur to me that we didn't really have the right frame for that. So, for example... Do I have the right fishing rod? This is the wrong fishing. Okay, wrong fishing spear too. Everything's going splendid. Well, we have the right mining laser, because there is no wrong mining laser. So let me show you guys some of the best places to go if you just want to mine up some ore real quick. And that is going to be right over here. 
this is right near the opening or entrance to Cetus as well. So once you get over here, you can fight enemies out here if you want, but you really don't need to. You honestly don't even need these nodes on the outside. The way the mining game works is you find your little dots, you let it go, and then you try to release as close to dead center as you can, and that'll get you some ore. This also beeps as you get closer to ore, and if you look at your mini-map, it'll actually put little gemstones wherever the ore is. Now, it is worth noting that when you do this, it does generate noise that will draw enemies in. So you can kind of keep that in mind and maybe listen for people to be running up behind you or something while you're doing this. Like that. Pretty sure we just saw somebody shoot right next to us. Yep, he's up there. Hey. Hey, guess what? Alright. Now that we've taken care of that, let's, let's get to the real fun. So the mining in this particular cave is really, really great, and it's super accessible because it's right outside Cetus. You honestly don't even need the Arcwing to mine here. It's actually just a really, really efficient mining location to go to. All right, we're gonna hit that one, and then one more. You will need some of this ore to build pretty much anything you pick up here. Oh, we got Azurite, very nice. So that was a perfect mining result. And that Azurite right there is something we'll probably need in order to build Gara later. But as you can see, we've got another one here, another one here. Like, we can go all the way through this cave, and it goes down pretty far. Another one here, and what's crazy, too, is that when you get to the bottom of this, there's another one right there. Nodes everywhere, guys. Nodes everywhere. Look at, look at right here. Look at our mini-map right here. Nodes everywhere. There's so many nodes down here. And when you do get to the bottom here, this is a Grenier area, so keep that in mind as you're moving forward. You will end up needing to kill some enemies as you go. However, you can kill your way through down here and just mine everything out. Like, if you're looking for ore, my recommendation is to come through here and strip mine everything you can find. Because uh, these enemies are not particularly tough. You can kind of push through them relatively easily. Like, I'm meleeing through turrets down here. It also depends on your level, though, so it doesn't hurt to pick a lower level mission if you're just here to mine ore, because it won't really affect the outcome of your ore gains. And then, yeah, you just come down here and you mine this place out. That'll get you all of the ore that you could, pot that could potentially need. Sorry, it's early, guys. My tongue is, is not working properly. Hello there, friend. Let me cut you down. Uh, so, after this, we're going to take a look at the animal capture process, which may be tough because it's going to be night, so it'll be a little bit harder to see the animals when they do come in, I suspect. But it shouldn't be too bad. Um, as far as the missions, the bounties go, you definitely want to get a group, mainly because of things like what happened in that last one. Like, I'm not saying I'm the best player in the world, but that really wasn't slated in our favor in any kind of way. Every time we took out the air support, the ground guys would be on it. Every time we took out the ground guys, the air support would be on it. It really wasn't as approachable as I remember it being, but I also rarely ever did those alone. I did those alone once I got Gara, and Gara would have trivialized that whole thing. Like, if you have Gara there, you can actually put a damage shield on the dro uh, droid, on the drone that gives it 90% damage reduction, and that basically means that as long as you keep that shield up, the drone will make it to its destination without too much trouble at all. So when it comes to actually hunting critters, this is going to be a little bit different from anything we've done before. Uh, so we're going to drop to the ground here. We're going to pull out our Kuoka or our Kuwaka lure. We're going to just, you know, just hold it and then fire the trigger to paint some images on our map. Now, if we hold M, we can bring up the static map and we can see here, here, and here. There are some Kuwaka spawns. So I'm going to right click this one to mark it as a target. I'm not sure what that blue waypoint is. Oh, the waypoint is the thing I just put, but I don't know what that blue circle is. I'm guessing that might be where we found the drone that got wrecked. Uh, let's head on over here, and we should be able to find a Kawaka. Now, when you get close to here, you're going to need to pull your thing out one more time. Oh, actually, you don't need to pull the thing out. What might help, though, if we have it, is the synthesis scanner. And you can kind of use that to narrow down what you're looking for. It might highlight... There it is. Yeah, it highlights it. So that's what we're looking for right there. You can actually scan it, too. There you go. We are looking for animal dung. We press X to trigger it. Animal sign. Yes, animal signs. Uh, so now we're looking for footprints, which we're going to follow to their destination. 
Now, you may be able to use the synthesis scanner to highlight these, but honestly, you're probably better off just walking them. I like that we're just getting wrecked by something while we do this. I'm going to put on iron skin and pretend they're not there, because that's how iron skin works. Uh, in fact, if they're shooting you while you cast iron skin, you actually get more iron skin, so... We kind of get to ignore this guy. We will kill him when we get to our destination, though. And that's mainly because we don't want him to scare off our prey, the Kuwaka. There we go. Alright, so... This is the call point right here that we're going to want to use to summon the Kuwaka. Now, before we do, we're going to make sure that if there's any enemies around still shooting us, we deal with them. Where are they even at? Dude, really? I'm like a mile away. Can you just let it go? Can you maybe just let that go for me, bud? Yeah, just let it go. You too. Let it go. While I'm at it, I'm just going to kill this too. Let it go. Who's still shooting at us? Alright, there's another guy down here. Let it go. We're teaching them about Disney, guys. That's what we're doing. We're teaching them about Disney. They need to let it go. Really? Bye. Is that it, or do we still have more? There's obviously somebody else shooting at us, I just don't know where from. Taxon's not finding them. Taxon, come on, do your job. Whatever, I'm over it. I'm not even gonna worry about it. Oh, wait a minute, I think we got him. Hi. Can you stop? Thank you. These guys are just ruining this, guys. They're just ruining this wonderful nature hunting experience we're trying to... Where do they keep coming from? Okay, so the one thing we're learning about the Plains of Cetus right now is that they are completely unpredictable. There you go, folks. That's the lesson for today. Okay, so now we're on the point. We're gonna pull out the little Kuwaka thingy bob. We're just gonna kind of move around in a circle. Play the sound effect. We're waiting to hear them talk back to us like that. The Kuwaka, the elder cousin of the Valis Bobber, but unlike that herbivore... <laughs> I'll let him talk. There, let's do that. Uh, so you see this little indicator right here on the right side of the screen that I'm moving up and down? We want to put our light right into that thing and then we want to kind of follow it down. If we successfully match the cadence and the pace of this and stay in it for most of the time, that'll actually call the Kuwaka. We'll hear it talk back. Okay, so now we need to go quietly, quietly away somewhere. Just, just be quiet, hang out for a moment. Uh, pull out our Trank Rifle, and now we wait. Wait, oh, there it is. You guys see it? Nailed it. Okay. Now we run up and we scoop it. And this little guy comes out. Perfect capture. We got plus zero for a perfect capture. We must be capped out on rep? What is that all about? Uh, or maybe these guys just aren't worth much? That's weird. Normally you get a good amount of rep for this. Uh, it was a perfect capture though, so that's the right way to do it. A timid rodent that is easily frightened. It has abnormal swelling. And that's it. We got tags for it. Eyes clear, strong vital signs. Easy movement. Alright, good job, man. So now you can do that on loop as much as you want. You can kind of pull that thing out whenever and just do another search and it should pull them up. And then you can go to your map. We got three more Kuwaka points right there that we could go to. And the Kuwaka is the lowest level one, so as you gain more rep with Ostrin and you rank up with them, you'll gain access to higher level lures. Once you gain access to the highest level lure, you'll be able to go after something that'll give you a considerable amount of rep every time you do it. I think the one in Orvalis, when you do it, gives you like, I want to say, it's either 2 or 4k rep. Which right now, like, on my main account, I cap out at like 16k rep with Orvalis. So that means you capture like eight of them, you're done with your rep for the day. Which is really, really nice. Captures are a great way to build up your rep. Fishing can also do that. Uh, we didn't get to do much fishing while we were out this time. But mining can also do it too, and I'll show you how that works when we get back into Cetus. We have a lot of little changes to make. And I honestly think maybe... Volt would have been a better choice for doing this than Rhino was. Primarily just because we had no means of 
Okay, so the stomp worked out for us, right? Because the stomp helped with the ground forces, but we had no means of dealing with the aerial forces. I don't know that uh, Volt would have made that better, though. So you can see we got the Plains Kuwaka tag now. We got the Pyro. We got some Azerite. Uh, we didn't get any fish or anything, but we'll deal with that on the next run out there. And honestly, I'm going to see if we can get a group for the next bounty because I don't know if we can handle that drone defense solo at this point. Like I said, if we had Gara, it would be not at all difficult, but we don't have Gara yet. That's kind of why we're out there. Uh, so if we go to Master T Sonai here, we can trade our tags in and you can get some cool stuff here. Uh, I've actually gotten this before, apparently. You can buy little stuffed animals that you can put on your ship. They do require five tags of whatever animal they are, though. So if we look here, we have a Plains Kuwaka tag. We can get five of those to get a Plains Kuwaka Floof, which is one of the coolest things you can collect in the game. Uh, there's also barter goods here that you can trade different materials for, so you can get like a caged Kuwaka to put on your ship, things like that. You can also get some different uh, colorations for your pets. So definitely check Master T and I out quite frequently. He's got good stuff a lot of the time. Now if we are to walk over and check out our mining guy, whose name I cannot remember, as it escapes me. Hello there, Sumbot. Okay. So if we go to Sumbot here, we can trade gems for Austrian Standing. And each gem has a different value, which it shows you. So we get 50 for the Azerite that we found. Uh, we don't actually have any of these other gems, I don't think. So we can't turn those in. But you can kind of see where, where you get your money. You can get, or where you get your rep. You can get 400 from Centrum, 400 from Nith, 100 from Crimson, 50 from Devar, uh, 75 from Verdos. And basically all you do is you can put as many as you want. So you can go like, I want to give you three of these. It'll tell you your total. You redeem them. Yeah, we're capped out. That's why we were unable to get any more when we caught that animal, which is unfortunate. So we'll see what we need to rank up with Austrin. Now you can do the same thing with fish here. If you go to provide fish, you can give them fish to gain reputation. Uh, you can also cut fish here to get the materials from the fish, but we'll go into that a little bit further once we've caught some fish. Which reminds me, we need to reorganize our gear wheel here real quick. So that's gone. Have no use for the K-Drive anymore. I'm still going to keep it on the wheel because I do use them from time to time just for fun. I'll replace the charge spec or the Charger Spectre. I, I thought it was Charging Spectre. Anyways, so we'll replace that and now we have both of our methods of transportation easily accessible right on top. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to grab our Lanzo Fishing Spear, which we need. And I think other than that we're probably pretty good, but I'm going to double check through here and make sure there's nothing else I want to bring. No, seems good. Could bring some health restorers if we want, but I don't think that us running out of health was the biggest issue we had there. The biggest issue we had was the drone running out of health, which we really couldn't do a whole lot about. Ooh, just got a really, really hard lag spike there for some reason. Not sure what that was all about. Let's go talk to Kanzu real quick and see what we need to go ahead and upgrade our Austrian Standing, which will probably be some materials that we didn't have that are easy to gather once you have the Arcwing, so we'll be able to do that. Yeah, so Nissel Pods, Iridite, Grokdul. We know how to get Grokdul, we know how to get Iridite. Nissel Pods spawn as like a plant that you have to fly around and look for. Uh, and we're actually shy on credits now. So the best bet is still to do a bounty. However, this time what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves off of friend only and just go public. And then we'll take the lowest level bounty. There should be some other players that'll probably join in. Hey, and there's Streamline, which we actually need. These do rotate every day-night cycle, so there's the Oxium that I told you guys you could get, which means if we go here, there should be 200 Oxium. Yeah, so you can get that 200 Oxium really, really fast taking that mission. Okay, so we're going to go for this one first. We're going to hope that somebody joins us so that if we get the drone defense, we're not completely ruined, because that drone defense is ridiculous, guys. That drone defense is just unreal. Like, I'm not even... I tried so hard. I tried so hard, guys. It makes me feel like a scrub when I try to do something like that on, on recording or on stream, and it just goes bad. But uh, at the same time, this you know this isn't my main account. If we had Gara, like I said, that would have been cake. I'm just overestimating based on the power level of my main account, which is good because at the same time it lets us see what's reasonable for for you guys as newer players. That's kind of the whole reason I did this and made this new character was because I didn't want to do this with a high-level character and pretend that I was a low-level character, because that never works. Okay, we're going to put the data mass into this thing, and we are going to defend it. So now we have to just defend this point. Shouldn't be too bad. Honestly, if we had Frost, that would be nice here. Actually, Frost probably would have made a, a big difference on that drone defense as well, now that I think about it. Where are these enemies at? 
And as usual, it's going to be the guys in the sky that are the biggest problem here. So we're going to go airborne and try to take these guys out. Bye. Okay. Now there's just a lot of dudes over here on the ground, so we'll come take them out. Going to activate our iron skin here to make sure our defenses are good. Now, one thing you can do here to help yourself out quite a bit is if you know enemies are attacking the point and the point is losing shields and getting weaker, you can rush them and that'll cause them to swing at you or shoot at you instead of going after the target and that can give the target time to regen shields. Now I'm hearing something above us which could mean that there is an airborne unit flying around hitting the point. What I'm going to do is keep an eye on the point's shield and health values to make sure that that's not happening. We need to keep the console above 80% if we want to get our bonus here. Die, die, die. So there's definitely a lot to keep track of, and it's a lot easier if you can get a group for this. Uh, but even if you can't, these low-level ones are still very, very doable. This would be infinitely more doable if we had, like, a Frost or a Gara at this point. Now I'm kind of regretting maybe not farming Frost, because Frost is the first readily available defense frame. I just never used it on my main account, so I kind of glanced over him and figured we'd just get Gara first. Didn't occur to me that getting Frost might be the ladder that we needed to get Gara. I figured that Rhino would carry us to that. But I seem to stand corrected. Although I did focus on getting, well, and we're not we're not there yet, but Octavia is another great one that I got pretty early in my my main accounts playthrough, and that was another real lifesaver when it comes to defense missions. Because while Octavia can't actually prevent points from taking damage, you can put down a damage effect around the Oh, Oxium. Nice. That's actually a really good pull. I accept this. Uh, we should have gotten our bonus there as well. So now we get the rewards from in there, which were Nissel Pods, Grokul, and some Maprico. So both of those things we kind of needed to rank up here. So as you can see, if you do these missions, you will get kind of the rewards that you need to be able to move up in rank with the Ostron. And now we're going to come over here to the next objective. This is just clear all hostiles. This is what I'm talking about. This is a mission I can get behind. Let's go. In fact, I wonder if the missions... I, I actually don't know if this is the case, guys, but if you discover that the drone defense mission is tied to a specific starting mission, my advice would be just to avoid that one entirely. Like, if we know for a fact that it's tied to that rescue mission, then I would just avoid the rescue mission and restart the bounty if you get that one. Because the drone one is just untenable. That defending the point one wasn't too bad. Uh, this one's not too bad either. The worst part about this one is that they can drop enemies in rather far away from you where you can't actually tell they're being dropped in. And when they do that, it will spike the percentage of control in the area quite a bit quite quickly. Uh, so you want to be on top of where the enemies are dropping in. Your main job here is to look out for where those things are going down. Uh, there are currently enemies that are giving us a lower control percentage here, and I don't know where they're at. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Doing okay here. Uh, just monitoring that control level is the main thing here. See enemies coming in over here, so we need to be over here. And we need to take them out as quickly as possible. Now I am leveraging Rhino's Stomp quite a bit here to control the area and keep them from overrunning it. Yep, that'll do right there as well. Gonna take him out. Uh, this control point one can be one of the toughest ones depending on where it spawns. Oh, we just found a natural... That's a Nisslepod plant right there, that thing on the ground that we're slashing through at the moment. Anyways, these control point missions can be some of the toughest ones to, to keep track of, and that's because depending on the area you're in, it can actually put guys underground that you do not see, and that will spike your control point control... or your control level, rather, quite quickly to the negative. And you won't know where they're at or how you can deal with it. So if you find yourself in a control mission like this and for some reason your numbers keep spiking down but you can't figure out where the enemies are, look for caves. Caves and anything that will take you underground because chances are they're hiding down there. Okay, 26 seconds. We can do this. 26 seconds. I'm getting kind of frantic here. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just going to be spin to winning with my sword, just doing whatever I can to kill enemies as quickly as I can and keep them from controlling this point in any meaningful way. All right? And you can see they really lay it on here towards the end. They just put enemy after enemy after enemy on the ground, and you've really got to stay on top of it. Come on. You're dead too, bud. Uh, so now there's a whole group of them being let down over here. I'm going to stomp to kill them. 
All right, got it. Looks like we got it at least. We got past the control point part. Now we just need to kill all the enemies that it's dropped, and I think the last ones are right over... Oh, nope, that's not an enemy that it dropped. Where are they? Huh? Huh? Where you at? Oh, that's nice. Iron Phoenix. What is it with this noob account and getting sword stances? Like, I, I have zero sword stances, or I have one now, I think, on my main account that I've been playing on for six months, and this account has, like, three. It's insane. It's it's just the weirdest of luck. Okay, the next one is to find Grenier Caches. This is a really fun one, and this is actually one that works very, very similar to finding caches in sabotage missions. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your ears here. Your ears are going to be very, very vital. In fact, I'm going to turn my volume up just a little bit. So if you hear a little bit of echo in the mic, I apologize for that. I'll try to take it out and post if I can. The main thing is I need to be able to hear the resonating sound that the caches make. That's one of the easiest ways to find them. Now, if you're not good with the, the sound detection part of it, you do get this sort of yellow circle where they should be at, and you can just kind of roam around and, and look for them. They are like orange containers that flash. You'll see what they look like when we get one. Ooh, this is a really weird yellow circle because half of it is like off the edge of the map. Wow, and something keeps spinning us here. I'm not sure. Oh. I keep spinning us because... Wait, did I just get... Okay, for a minute there, I was like, did I just get outside the edge of the map? Can you just not? Can you please just not? There. There. Bye. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're going to go back to looking for our caches here. We're kind of zooming around. And it's really weird that it spawned it right on this edge. Because it makes me think that maybe there is an underground component to this. I guess we'll find out, though. I do note that it hasn't given us like a ticking talk like it or a ticking clock like it normally would for this. Normally you have a time limit, which makes me suspect that perhaps we're not exactly in the right area. You can also see right in the center of that yellow circle there is a downward arrow, which is an indicator that what we're looking for is likely underground here. I'm just trying to deal with these guys so they'll just leave us alone. Iron skin's up already, so that's good. Okay, we got that. Just grabbing Grokdol because we need it for our rank up here. What the? Y you guys see the problem here, right? We're in the yellow circle, but it's telling us that it's 500 meters away that way now. Uh, yeah. So that's what I was talking about with sometimes the things get really weird. That's why. It's showing us the entrance to the cave here. Okay. So this is what it is. Uh, let's see. We do have a teammate now, so I'm going to mark that. And I'm going to tell our teammate... WP1 is the cave entrance. Okay. There we go. Took me a second to type because my new mic... Like, I got a new mic arm, and it puts the mic right in front of my keyboard. Uh, actually... Adjust that slightly. Hopefully that doesn't radiate through the mic too badly. It shouldn't. I've got a, a shock mount, so it should be fine, but you never know. And stomp. Stomp is very good here. What the... I don't know what hit us when we stomped there. I guess one of the guys started off like an AoE before I stomped. Okay. So now that we're down here and we're actually in the right area... Well, I guess we're not. We're quite a ways away. These cave networks are crazy on this map. Uh, that's nice, though. Gif. Gif that. Give me these. I'll probably refill ammo here just to be safe. And then once we get closer, now the time has started. So we've got eight minutes to find all the caches. This is where using our hearing comes into effect. All right. Definitely take the advantage to stealth kill enemies if you can. You actually get more affinity for stealth kills. So I'm going to jump down here just in case. Doesn't look like there's any down here. So now we've got this very, very large yellow circle that they could be anywhere within. And all we can do is kind of run around and look for them. Now you can, of course, get through them a lot faster, or get through here a lot faster if you're sliding and bullet jumping and all that. Uh, I'm kind of trying to be a little bit more meticulous, though, because the... Oh, 
The worst possible outcome here is that you go past one of them and you don't realize it, and then you just keep going further into the cave and you never find that one. Wow, we haven't found a single one yet, though. This is kind of crazy. Okay. I hear it. I thought I heard one back here. Oh, I could have swore I just heard one. I am definitely hearing one. There it is. Oh, look at that, guys. Purely by hearing. So this is what they look like. They're little glowing orange containers like that. Uh, you're definitely going to want to listen closely to that effect. If you want to find them, that is the, the real catch right there. It's hard to describe as a sound. It's almost just like a resonating noise. And if there's enemies around, it's also very, very hard to hear it. So you definitely want to clear the enemies out and then continue looking. Is this really the extent of this area? Okay. Well, that's interesting. So then where... I see a missile pod down here. I'm going to hop down and grab this since we're in the area anyway. Really? Did I already get it? I must have already gotten it. There's, there's an ore node way underwater. There's a Nissel pod right here we can hit and get some Nissel pods from. You guys hear that resonating sound? Ah, found another one. Look at that. Wow, this is probably the, the craziest one of these I've ever had. I've never actually found one where they were like out here on the water all, all nutso like this. Oh no, into the water I go. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted that loot, and I <laughs> got it and whiffed the platform again. You guys hear that? Okay, I thought maybe it was up there. We have just one left to find. Oh, that's crazy, guys. It's just crazy, and that running water actually is not helping any. Like, that running water actually drowns out the sound. Oh, where's it gonna be? We're on the last one. It would... Oh, oh, I hear it. You guys hear it? You hear that noise? That's the noise right there. I'm just gonna let it, I'm gonna stand here for a minute because I want you guys to be able to hear that sound and really listen to it. Okay, so we got it. We got our bonus there and because we got all three bonuses, we will get times two reward at the end. Uh, so we probably got double streamlines there, I'm assuming. Because I, I think it just multiplies whatever you got instead of, like, giving you two different ones, which I think would honestly be a slightly better system. It just multiplies whatever you got. Ooh, flame repellent. That's not very useful, but it looked nice. Uh, we did get the streamline, though, which is awesome. I'm super happy about that. We needed streamline to basically finish out our basic mod set. And now that we've done that, we're gonna... Actually, you know what? We could have fished down here now that I think about it. Let's let's stomp some dudes to kill them, and then we'll go fish down here in the water. There may even be some extra special fish in here. I don't fish in the caves here very often. I usually fish at Garathot Lake, or I fish at the ocean if I'm trying to catch rare fish. Because if you go out to the ocean, you can catch... Um, God, why can't I remember the name of them? I, I literally just sat there catching them yesterday to get my six rare fish for 
the night wave, and I can't remember the name of the fish. I know they weren't spawning for us. We were trying really, really hard, and they just weren't spawning for us at all. Uh, okay. So, Lynxus fishing rod. Now, it is worth mentioning that you may not see the fish very clearly unless you bring dye with you. Uh, I'm pretty used to fishing without dye, so I'm reasonably sure that I'll be able to spot something in here. Like you basically just look for places like this by the rock walls where there's going to be some contrast if something's moving in the water. They may not even spawn down here either, so I guess we'll find out. I know for a fact they spawn in the lakes and on the uh, ocean bed, but I don't know if they spawn here. Not really seeing anything moving. Hmm? No? No? No, I'm not seeing them. What was that? Oh, I just got three shotgun ammo randomly. Apparently there is a shotgun ammo fish around. You know what? Oh, what? This is an invalid launch point. Normally you can launch out of places like this and fly back up over the side, but I guess not here. We may actually be able to launch inside the cave that- nope. <laughs> Can't blame me for trying. Oh boy. And then I took a little swim. Okay, so we're gonna get out of here, and we're gonna go to somewhere that I know fish spawn. They might spawn here, but I can't say for sure. And without die, I don't want to spend too much time sitting here. If you are really, really impatient, I recommend bringing die. Just, just bring die if you're impatient. If you're more like me, and you're like, no, I'm not spending any of my reputation on your stinking die, then you don't need to bring the die. The die is optional. Uh, how do we get out of here? Can we go up this? Oh, how much you want to bet there's a switch right here? I'm like ignoring the switch. I'm taking the hard way up, guys. Which wouldn't have mattered anyway, because if I had taken the hard way up, I wouldn't have been able to get out. Thank you to our teammate who basically didn't wait for us, just took the elevator. I mean, honestly, I was fishing though, so I get why he left. Okay, up top we go. We're going to go fish a little bit and take those back. So that's just a basic introduction to the, the activities here in Cetus. I'm glad that we were able to get the cache one so that I could show you guys how to listen for those because that's one of the harder ones. Obviously, the drone protection mission is a harder one. If you get at least one other person with you, it's usually not so bad. The main reason that drone protection was rough was because without one other person, you're expected to both protect the air and the ground, and that's not really doable. Now, as long as you get one other person, even if they just have the K-Drive, like if you're the only one with the Arc Wing, then take to the skies, make it work, you'll be fine. But when you don't have at least one other person and you're trying to do it all on your own, that can get really tough. Okay, there's some fish pools here. That means we should be able to catch some stuff in the water. Uh, let's go see if we can find a spot where the water is breaking a little bit. Like right here. It was breaking here. Oh gosh, they're shooting. Can you, can you guys not shoot the fish, please? I'm trying to catch fish here. Please no shoot fish. Dude, the glare of the sun on the water is actually making it harder to see. Ah, you guys see that? Right there. One just spawned in. That's a Goopala. Got him. Got him. Okay, so spear fishing. You gotta line up the shot on the fish. They do run away if you whiff or if you walk in the water edge a little bit, so you gotta be careful about that. Uh, they tend, in my experience, to spawn when you've got the fishing spear out. So if you don't keep the fishing spear out and aimed, I don't know if they actually spawn. There's another Goopala. Goopalas are not very uh, valuable fish. They're probably some of the least valuable fish. Normally what I fish for is like shark eels and stuff, because you'll need a lot of those to make Gara. And you'll find shark eels over in Gara Thought Lake, which is why I tend to fish over there more. I mainly fish over here when I'm looking for rare fish, and I can't actually remember the name of the rare fish that spawns over here. Maybe we'll get one. I doubt it, but maybe. Oh, it's Murkray. It's Murkray. Yeah, so there's a fish called Murkray that will spawn over here, and if you can't get them to spawn, you can buy Murkray bait. It's not extremely expensive rep-wise, but it does cost you a little bit of rep. Uh, that being said, I would say that a little bit of Austrian rep is worth Nightwave credit any day of the week. Nightwave credit is extremely valuable because it's still the only real efficient way to get, like, a reactor or a catalyst for your frames or your weapons. So anything you can do to get more Nightwave is probably a good thing. Hey look, there's a big Goopla out there. 
Hey, Goopla Goopla. Honestly, I find this kind of relaxing. Uh, later on, too, you, when you complete a few more missions, you'll be able to put some of these fish on display in your ship if you want to, which is another very cool thing. There is one other activity that I didn't cover, but we also didn't see the thumper. There is a giant tank-like thing called a thumper out here that will gather resources for the Grenier, but you can kill it and it'll drop a ton of really useful resources that can only be gotten here by like mining and fishing and stuff like that. In order to kill it though, it has like four knees. You have to blow these metal plates off the knees and then shoot it directly in these green lights on the knees until they blow up. It takes quite a while and without a team of four, it's very, very difficult, uh, depending on your build. Like obviously if you're super end game and you come in with like a heck with prime ravage and prime point blank and you come in with rhino so it can't knock you over and you just shoot it, you'll probably take it out really quickly. But in most cases, it's not an easy thing to take out. Hello, Astronobi. Oh, that's an ash. Very nice. Very nice. You gonna come to the exit or are you just gonna stand there? Okay, well, I guess... Oh. What? They left group. That's what happened. That's why they were just standing there. Okay. So we got a streamline. We got an iron phoenix. Uh, I wonder if we got two streamlines and it doesn't show that you got two of them because I know we hit the bonus on everything. Got a couple Goopala there. Got some more stuff that we need to get our next Austrian rank. So if we come over here and we check. Oh, that's not the one I wanted to check. How far are we from our next rank up? All we need now is Iridite, which we know how to get. We take the highest level mission, we go farm it on the planes by running around breaking the nodes, and then wham bam, we're on our next rank. So what I recommend doing if you're a new player, if you don't want to just farm this to get Gara or to get some of the things that drop from those missions, my recommendation is to come here every day, do your daily reputations worth, and then go do something else. Like, it won't hurt you to do that. It'll be a nice, efficient little grind of sorts that will help you get further and further towards having Gara, towards having better rep with the Austrians, all those kinds of things. So here we can go provide fish now, and we can see that if we give her a large goopla, it's going to give us 50, so on and so forth. Obviously, rarer fish are worth more. Uh, and then the other thing we can do here is we can cut the fish, which is what I'm going to do, because I'm more likely to need the materials than I am to need the rep. The rep, if you're doing bounties, you'll rarely need rep from doing this stuff, but you will need fish oil, scales, stuff like that. All that stuff's going to be very useful to you in the long run. All right. So we've done that. We've shown off the planes a little bit. Shown off some of the pitfalls, too, for, for new players. That drone defense mission is definitely a difficult one. Uh, if you want, you can farm frost. That would help a lot, I think, because you could at least put your frost orb up on that thing while you take out the air support, and that would help, I think, keep them from sort of killing it on the ground. That's going to be it for this one, though, folks, and I will see you next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!